Today I'm going to be talking about honesty. The title of my sermon is Honesty is Still the Best Policy. How many know that honesty is still the best policy? Even though in our culture, it seems like honesty isn't the most important thing. Uh, we can look at politicians, and this is what we know for sure. They don't think it's the best policy. Because many times politicians are caught in lies, deception. And then in our own lives, that we can be dishonest at times. Now, I won't ask you to raise your hand if you've ever been dishonest. Because I'm afraid some of you will lie and not raise your hand. Because every single one of us have been dishonest. Is there anybody here that's never lied? Every person in this room has lied. We've got a bunch of liars in this room. I can't believe it. A room full of liars. Here's the truth. Have we not all lied at some point in time? Whether we were young or older, maybe you lied this morning. I don't know. Maybe you got pulled over by an officer and you lied to him to try to get out of a ticket. I don't know. That the reality, all of us have lied at one time or another, but just because we have lied doesn't mean it's okay. We understand that, right? Honesty is still the best policy, always will be the best policy. In any situation, honesty is the best policy. But what I believe, we go by what this word says. Because this is the truth. The Bible doesn't lie. So whatever principles in the Bible, we follow. In Colossians 3, 9, it says, Do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices. Do not lie to who? One another. Do not lie to one another since you've laid aside the old self with its evil practices. What that scripture is saying is that we used to have that old nature of ourselves and in that old nature some of the things we used to do is lie. So in our old nature we used to lie. And what the author is saying, what Paul is saying is that we have put away the things that we used to do. And so one of the things that we put away is to lie. Have you put that part away in your life? Or if you're caught in a situation, will you still lie to get out of that situation? Perfect example is tickets. The officer pulls you over and he says, do you know how fast you're going? I'm sorry, officer, I didn't know. Well, first off, that's stupid to say that. You know why? That means you weren't paying attention. So you should get a ticket. You don't be honest because you can get favor. You be honest because it's the right thing to do, whether you get favor or not. Do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self and his evil practices. I'm different than who I used to be. I used to lie, but I tell the truth. Should that not be our testimony? Young people, youth, do you lie to mom and dad? I think that probably sometime you lie. You probably, when they say to you, did you get your homework done? Yeah. Luke 6.31 says, do to others as you would have them to do to you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. What is that sometimes called? Sometimes called the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Six, Luke 6.31. So do you want people to lie to you? So should you lie to them? No. Do you want people to be deceptive with you? They, they actually go more than lie. They turn around and try to deceive you and trick you and to manipulate you. Do you want people to do that to you? No. So it says, do unto others you have them to do. I want people to be honest with me. I want people to be sincere with me. I want people to operate in integrity with me. So how should I operate? Same way. Same way. Do we fall short? Anybody ever fall short? Absolutely. But our goal should be to do unto others we, as we would have others do to us. We want people to be honest with us. We should be honest with them. It should be something that we strive for even if we fall short. Do we lessen this standard because we fall short? I know sometimes I'm going to lie, so you know what? God forgives me when I lie, and he understands that sometimes I lie, so it's okay. Is that, how we, is that how we live as Christians? Hopefully not. Absolutely not. Now listen to Proverbs 11.3. This is pretty strong words. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. 
The integrity of the upright guides them. When you walk in integrity, it will lead you to walk a certain path. Right? If I'm walking in integrity, there's certain ways I'm going to go, certain things I'm going to do. If I live with dishonesty, I go a different direction. And it says the integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. That's strong words. It says that if you're crooked, if you're dishonest, and you become treacherous, which means your dishonesty is to harm others, that it will destroy you. And everybody in this room will say, but there are people who have been dishonest with me, they've been evil with me, they have been treacherous with me, but they have not been destroyed. Isn't that true? They're still on this earth. Maybe they lied about you. Maybe they caused you to lose a job. Maybe they turned around and, and broke up a relationship you had by their dishonesty. But they're still around. When it says the, uh, the, the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them, you know what's being destroyed is their heart. Their conscience is being destroyed. Their heart's being destroyed. In the end, there will be a judgment. So if I'm living a life of dishonesty and I'm living a life of deception and I'm manipulating people and it looks like I'm getting away with it, am I getting away with it? I'm getting away with it at the time. But am I getting away with it in the end? No. So my deception, my trickery, my treacherous behavior may appear that God is not seeing it, but the end there will be a judgment to come. But along the way, it starts to affect us. If you're deceptive, if you're lying, if you're dishonest, if you're doing things that's deceptive, and you look in the mirror, what do you see? You see a dishonest, deceptive person. How do you live with that? You know there's only one way to live with that? To deceive yourself. To justify your behavior. That's the only way you can live with that. So you not only deceive others, but you deceive yourself. And destruction comes when there is deception. James 3.17. This is how I think we should live as Christians. James 3.17. Wisdom that comes from above is first of all pure, then peace-loving, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. There's some character traits that I think all of us would like to have in our lives. Again, James 3.17. Wisdom that comes from above. Where's wisdom coming from? From above, from heaven. We're not talking about man's wisdom. We're talking about God's wisdom. We want to live according to God's wisdom, not man's wisdom. So when man's wisdom comes from above, and first off, it's pure. If you're walking in wisdom, you will walk in purity. A wise man walks in purity. Then it says, it's peace-loving. If you're walking in wisdom, you want to see peace. You want peace to be around you. If you walk in purity, more likely peace is going to follow you. Then it says that wisdom that comes from above is gentle. It's kind. It's caring. Is compassionate. It's open to reason. Wisdom from above is open to reason. What does that mean? Wisdom that's from heaven above is open to hear both sides of a story. Wisdom says, I want to get all the information and I want to be open to reason. Convince me if I am wrong. Show me that I'm wrong. A wise person is willing to find out they're wrong. An unwise person never wants to receive anything but good news. You're the greatest person in the world. You're wonderful. You do everything right. Is it wisdom to want that? Because if people tell you everything you do is right, you're wonderful, you're a great person, you probably will never change, and those areas that need to change will not change. It has to be open to reason. It says that wisdom is full of mercy and has good fruit. If you walk in wisdom, there will be evidence of you walking in wisdom. If you're walking in wisdom, you don't make bad choices. 
And then it says that wisdom is impartial. That means wisdom has no favoritism. If you're walking in wisdom, if you're being wise as a human being, you don't show, show partiality. And then it says that wisdom is sincere. I take sincere as being real. Wisdom is real, it's sincere. It doesn't put on a mask, it isn't fake. If somebody's walking in wisdom, if a church, if Seattle Open Door Church is walking in wisdom, first off, Seattle Open Door Church will seek God for that wisdom. It will not seek people, it will seek God for wisdom. If Seattle Open Door Church is walking in wisdom, it will walk in purity. It will not have ulterior motives as a church. Its motives will be pure. If Seattle Open Door Church walks in wisdom, it will want peace. It doesn't want turmoil. As a church, we don't want turmoil. We want peace. We want to do anything we can to bring peace in a situation. If Seattle Open Door Church is walking in wisdom, it will be gentle. It will not be harsh with the circumstances it has to deal with. Instead, it will be gentle with those circumstances it deals with. If Seattle Open Door Church is walking in wisdom, it will be open to reason. If Seattle Open Door Church is walking in wisdom, it will be open to hear two sides of every issue. If Seattle Open Door Church is walking in wisdom, it will be full of mercy. Mercy is given to those who don't deserve mercy. If Seattle Open Door Church is going to walk in wisdom, it gives mercy to those who do not deserve mercy. If Seattle Open Door Church operates in wisdom, there will be good fruit that comes from that. I think the greatest fruit that can come to a church is salvation of souls. I think the greatest fruit that can come to a church is lives transformed. If we are operating in, wis as, in wisdom as a church, there should be some good fruit that we'll see that will come from that. If Seattle Open Door Church is going to operate in wisdom, it will be impartial. It will not take sides on any issue. It will want the truth to prevail. It will want justice to prevail. If Seattle Open Door Church is going to operate in wisdom, it will be sincere. It will be open. It will be vulnerable. It will be real. If we as a church are going to be a church that's a wise church, we're going to apply these principles in every situation that we handle. 2 Corinthians 8.21 This should be every person's heart. 2 Corinthians 8.21 for we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. We are taking pains. How many know sometimes things are painful? Sometimes when you walk in wisdom and integrity and honesty, it's painful. Sometimes when you walk in mercy, it's painful. Sometimes when you're sincere, it's painful. Sometimes life is painful painful. For we are taking pains to do what is right. Not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. We as a church must do what is right before God. No matter the cost, no matter how painful it may be to do what is right, we as a church need to do what is right before our God. But not only before God, but before man. That we do what is right, not only before God, but for what man sees that we're doing, that man says what we're doing is the right thing to do. That even if man does not like us because we're Christians, even if man doesn't like what have taken place in this church, we should do what is right for the sake of man. Because we walk in wisdom. Can I tell you that honesty is still the right policy. This is Preacher Rich. Creating Futures is truly about helping individuals and churches to share the gospel of Jesus Christ.
My heart's desire is to see as many people as possible figure how they can have eternal life by having Jesus as their Lord and Savior and help them to grow in Christ. Give me a call at 1-866-WANT-GOD. That is 1-866-WANT-GOD. If you like this video, please click on the like below and subscribe to our Creating Futures channel. To learn about going to heaven, click on the attached video or go to creatingfutures.org. That is creatingfutures.org.